right now, however you may be listening to this, whether it be speakers, headphones, or through some kind of smart fridge, unless you're deaf, you can hear me. Speaking to you through this microphone, which is somehow capturing this audio, saving it onto my computer so that I can throw it into Adobe Premiere, chop it up, upload it to the internet, in which you can click on from wherever you may have an internet connection in the world to hear my voice speak to you. It's a version of me stuck in time forever repeating these words at your will. And if you're like me, you're probably here to figure out how that all works. So take a seat, get comfy, maybe grab a snack because this is the history of audio recording. In 1857, Edouard Leon Scott de Martinville, who was a bookseller by trade, invented the phonautograph, the first device capable of recording sound. But it was designed to be a visual representation of sound, as it had not occurred to anyone that these recordings had the possibility of being played back in order to recreate the sound up until the 1870s. But by the time that they realized this, Thomas Edison had already invented the phonograph, a device that recorded vibrations of sound onto wax cylinders that could be played back. It was later improved upon in the 1880s by Alexander Graham Bell, who invented the graphophone. It was relatively the same, but allowed for lengthier recordings and it was easier to use. It was later improved in the 1890s by transitioning from cylinders to the vinyl discs that we know today, and thus began the acoustic era. This lasted from 1890 up until 1925. It was the first era of audio recording that can predominantly be defined by the use of entirely mechanical devices, without the use of microphones or electrical amplification. During this era, artists would perform in front of a flared metal horn which funneled the sound waves towards a diaphragm at the end of the horn. The energy of these sound waves caused the diaphragm to vibrate. The vibrating diaphragm caused an attached stylus to etch the sound waves into a blank wax rotating cylinder or disc. During this era, after recording, that was it. There was no way to edit the recording, and if artists wanted to change something, they would have to re-record and alter their position from the horn in order to be louder or quieter and prevent distortion from occurring. In order to listen to the recording, one would have to use a machine called a soundbox or a reproducer. A steel needle was bound to an encased diaphragm that was attached to a tapering tube known as a tone arm. The needle running over a cylinder or disc caused the diaphragm to vibrate and would create sound waves conducted through the tone arm. There were some drawbacks to this older equipment, as it could only capture a narrow range of the audible sound spectrum, which was approximately 250 hertz up to 2500 hertz. Because of this limitation, artists tend to favor louder instruments, such as the trumpet, trombone, tuba, and bass. This technology was a great advancement for mankind, as it allowed for the oldest known intelligible recording of human voice, which is from 1860. It is a rendition of the French folk song, and pardon my French, Au Clair de la Lune. But once 1925 rolled around, it was time for the electrical era. It began due to the invention of the electrical microphone, signal amplifiers, and electromechanical recorders. Now sound could be amplified, filtered, and balanced electronically. But the recording process remained mechanical, in which the sound waves were still physically inscribed into a master disc made of wax, and then consumer discs were mass-produced by stamping metal electrophone made from the wax master. In earlier years, a shellac-based compound, and later polyvinyl plastic. Western Electric drastically changed the audio recording industry. The fidelity of sound recording was greatly improved. A much wider range of the audible sound spectrum was available to be picked up. 60 hertz up to 6,000 hertz, allowing a fuller and richer sound. Electrical microphones and amplifiers were invented, allowing artists to record their voices and instruments easier. Specifically, instruments such as the guitar and the bass. Amplifiers allowed these instruments to be heard at an equal level to the singer. In the 1930s, the film industry started using sound on film technology, in which the audio would be recorded to modulate a light source that was imaged onto the moving film through a narrow slit, allowing it to be photographed as variations in the density or width of a soundtrack running along a dedicated area of the film. The projector used a light, as usual, and a photovoltaic cell to convert the variations back into an electrical signal, which was amplified and sent to the loudspeakers behind the screen. 
By 1945, the magnetic era had begun, because in the 1930s, the Germans had invented magnetic tape recording. This technology was only made public after the Second World War when the Allies discovered it. Magnetic tape made yet another dramatic leap in audio fidelity. Essentially, magnetic tape recordings worked by converting electrical audio signals into magnetic energy, which imprint a record of the signal onto a moving tape covered in magnetic particles, and in order to play back the audio, they had to convert the recording on tape back into electrical energy to be amplified. From 1950 onwards, magnetic tape was widely used as the standard medium for audio recording and mastering by the radio and music industries. There were a vast array of new possibilities that could be achieved with this technology, but most notably, engineers could manipulate, edit, and combine in ways that were impossible with discs and vinyl recordings. The magnetic era gave birth to a lot more technologies that you may be familiar with, VHS tapes, cassette tapes, but when 1975 rolled around, we would enter the current era of audio recording, the digital era. It so far has been the quickest to evolve. In a period of fewer than 20 years, all previous recording technologies were rapidly superseded by digital sound encoding. Digital recordings captured sound by means of a very dense and rapid series of discrete samples of the sound. When played back, these audio samples were recombined to form a continuous flow of sound. The first all-digitally recorded popular music album was Ry Cooter's Bop Till You Drop which was released in 1979, and from that point onward, digital sound recording became the new standard. Then, in 1982, the compact disc, or CD, was invented. CDs were the complete opposite of vinyl LPs. They were small, portable, durable, and could reproduce the entire audible sound spectrum with perfect clarity and no distortion. CDs are made up of a polycarbonate disc layer that has the data encoded using bumps, a shiny layer that reflects the laser, a layer of lacquer protects the shiny layer, artwork that's screen printed on top of the disc, a laser beam reads the CD, which is reflected to a sensor and then converts it into electronic data. Then, at the end of the 20th century, the digital audio file was invented. MP3s, WAVs, and many more. Digital audio became dominant and led to the world that we live in today. With iTunes and the iPod released, everything became a lot easier. Music became portable, you could bring it to work and school, and it's become so simple. It's not as clunky anymore, and in the present day, the main source that people get their music from is streaming services, like Spotify and Apple Music, which is straight off your phone. While technology has evolved as much as it has, I'm glad there's still a demand for physical media in the form of vinyl. It's only something that I've recently gotten into, but it's definitely something I'm going to end up spending a ton of money on. And hey... The future is still ahead of us. Who knows what advancements will be made from here. But for now, this has been Stemp. Thanks for watching.